half hitching, spiral or spiral half hitching. Anyway, what I'm going to do today, today's little exercise is I'm going to show you how to do half hitching, to use half hitching as a covering knot and as you can see it's starting to come out in a spiral effect on our handle or tube here. Um, so this is one that I've done in paracord and that's what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to do this in paracord um, simply for the fact is usual scenario just makes it a little bit easier to follow and see exactly what I'm doing. But if we go on to here, this one here is a needle case that I'm making. Um, unfortunately I don't have a wood turning machine and I don't even know how to turn wood anyway. Um, but I've used myself a plastic container here and I just thought I would put a nice, this is about one millimeter um, cordage on here and I just thought I'd put some nice spiral half hitching on this just to make it look a little bit more decorative rather than a plastic tube and I think eventually what I will do is I'll get some form of cork for the top um, as well but it was just it's just a test piece to see how it works out now the crucial thing is that when you are doing your half hitching in a spiral formation is the amount of tension that you're actually putting on your cordage to try and keep those spirals nice and evenly spaced I don't know if you can see that so easily evenly spaced apart I mean it's not brilliant this one it is Okay, it's a very easy stitch to do. The difficulty is in the actual tension that you're putting on each time as you do this. Now, here's a disappointing piece of work that I did a little while ago where I've got my spiral half hitching here, but I think the first thing that I did wrong was, one is I did it too tight, and the second thing is, and this is really crucial, is that if you've got any dinks, dents, or undulation in your work underneath it's not going to cover that it's going to highlight it and you can see as I rotate this you'll see there are bumps and curves in it and so personally for a piece of work yes I do keep this I do hang it on my ditty bag but it's an example of what I don't like I just don't like this piece of work because here I have not done enough care and attention to actually pack it underneath to make it really really smooth but you can see here on this one here where I have got it on a nice smooth surface I'm getting even spaces here with my paracord and it's just starting to look good and you can see here that that spiral effect is now starting to take place so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to do half hitching in a spiral or spiral half hitching on a tube or a handle, could be a handle for a hiking stick or something like that and what I will do now is I will go ahead and untie this and when I've untied this you know what I'm going to say, let's get knotting and I'll see you on the other side, see you in a minute. Right so here we have the handle, in this case a piece of pipe that we're going to cover and this is the paracord I'm using and I've also got myself a little nace, lacing needle here. Now the first thing I'm going to do obviously, now the thing is as well, this is one thing to remember that when you are using the half hitching spiral, spiral half hitching, the thing to remember is that it is cord hungry. I don't know exactly how much cord you need to cover something, but put it this way, let me tell you this, it is very very cord hungry and that is one disadvantage of using it even though it's very decorative yeah you can use a lot of cord doing this okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach my cord to my piece of pipe here itself and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get hold of my cord, cord like so and I'm just going to put a couple of twists in it two or three twists like that and then once I've put my twists in now let's see I'm going to just Hang on, let's do that again. So I'm going to put my twists in. One, two, three. And then put it around the object that I'm going to cover. And the reason I changed direction was I'm right-handed, so I want to go left to right in what I do it. And then I put it around my object like so. And then the next thing I do is just feed my cord through. And for those of you who know knots, 
what I've done here is I've basically done the timber hitch. And the beauty of the timber hitch, which we'll see in a second, is now that I've done it, put it round so it's all nice and neat, is that I end up with a noose that I can tighten up on. But the other advantage of it is, is that when you tie the timber hitch, it basically, it's a knot, uh, it's a knot. It doesn't, in a sense, form a big knot as such. Basically, the knot itself is spread around the actual object that you're covering. And so therefore, you can pull up really, really tight on this. And that's really, really tight now. We don't want it too tight because obviously we still want to get our lacy needle through. But it is a wonderful um, way of starting your work. So I've tied my timber hitch on that end. And the next thing I'm going to do is just move that out the way. I've got my lacing needle and I'm just going to thread my lacing needle onto the end of my cord like so. Just push it on and there we go. We're now ready to start. Right, now this is now where we're gonna put our first half hitch in. So that what I'm doing now is taking my cord like so. So you can see here, let me just get my pointer out, my trusty pointer. You can see here, here is the sort of the noose and this is our end coming out of the noose and going under my thumb and eventually gets to the end of the needle. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm holding it in position there with my thumb. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass my needle underneath like so. So pass it underneath there like so and then put my first half hitch in and then just gently pull it through. Now the thing with this as well as you'll find, one is you've got a lot of cord and two, you end up with this on, a, on quite, an often, quite often where the cord is twisted. And now that I've pulled it through, I'm now gonna pull it up nice and tight into a half hitch. Now the other thing is as well, which is also crucial at this point here, is that this distance here between the two you, you really want to determine what distance you want because that will determine as to how close or how far apart your spirals are as you go down. You'll see that as we go along. So basically, let's see. I'm just going to use my finger as a measurement. I want it a little bit smaller than that because I'm going to try and keep it the same throughout. And so there we go. And if I measure that, that feels nice and comfy for my little finger there. You can have it closer or further apart. The choice is yours. But now that I've done that one, I'm now going to go and get the end of my cord again. And this time, pass it underneath. So pass it underneath there, but make sure, so it's passed underneath the original knot here. It then wants to, pass, at the moment it's coming underneath this one here. I want to make sure that it goes over that one there like so. So it's coming over the lead there, pull it through like so, pull it nice and neatly through and you'll also notice that as we do this we eventually start covering that particular knot there or the um, timber hitch. So once again pull that up nice and tight so there and then what I want to do is just make sure that it's about the same distance so just put my finger in there, just feel it's the same distance, could be going up a little bit tighter like so, and then pull it up nice and tight. Now also the other thing that I want to do here is, I don't want this cord hanging down there because you'll see it through the actual work itself. So what I'm gonna do now is just poke that through, bring it out like so, so it just comes on the other side. We can cut that off flush later on. Okay, so there we go. We have now have another one in there. Just put my fingers there. Make sure they feel about the same. Bring it up a little bit. There we go. And then there we have it. We have our next one done. And it's exactly the same again. It's very, very simple, very easy. All I'm gonna do now is get the end of my paracord and put another half hitch in. And eventually, you can start to slacken off. At the moment, my hand is holding all this in place. But as we tie this around our object, 
it will gradually tighten it and it will really grip it fast. Nice and hard and fast and then just pull it up tight again and you can see here now we've got another half hitch in there. So I'm just going to, one, feels about the same, yet yeah, they feel about the same, distance looks the same and then once again take it round a little bit further and put another half hitch in so go underneath the original cordage itself like so bring it out so it goes underneath and then it's got to go over over this one here where it comes out to form the half hitch and then bring it up and pull it through and just keep on pulling fortunately for me at this point here I don't have a massive amount of paracord but if you're covering quite a long length you will find that it gets tangled up as you go along. And so you can see here now, I have now got another half hitch in there. Once again, just check it with my finger, make sure it, now that feels a bit small. So pull it out. It's taking care at the beginning will make sure that it's all nice and even as you go along. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna continue round until I get to the beginning again and then when I get back to the beginning, having done one complete circuit, I will show you what to do next. Right, so as you can see, I've gone round once and hopefully, hopefully, I've got them evenly spaced and I've got the tension the same as I've done it through. Now this is the difficult part of it. Doing this, the half hitch is easy, 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 but getting the tension and the spacing right is so important at the very beginning well, all the way through the tension, etc., because you just want to make it look good. Now, as you can see here now, this here, I have now finished my first row here, and you can see here now, this is where the join is, and so what I want to do now is start on the next row here, and what I'm going to do is, instead of looping around the, the whole lot itself, I'm gonna take that first loop there. So you can see that, that little gap there, I'm just gonna hook round that one once. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna pass it under that first loop there, like so, pass it underneath, make sure it goes over the top of this one here and then start pulling it all through. Pull it all through and if you've got a lot of paracord, I promise you, you will end up kinks all over the place. But that's something you've got to contend with as you do this. And now, you can see here now, what I've done is, I have now, in a sense, started my next row. Oops, my glasses just fell off with the excitement. But, just pull it up tight. I want to keep the tension the same. And you can see here now, so the next thing, I can't even see it, so the next thing is that I want to, I've gone through this one here, so what I'm going to do is take that and go through the next loop here underneath. So if I get the end of my needle again and I pass it underneath that next loop there, let's see, yes, that's the next loop, pass it underneath and just make sure, pass it underneath, it goes over the original cord there itself and then pull through the excess. And you can see here now, twists and kinks are starting to appear but pull them out because you want it to look nice and even and nice and smart, military-like. And then pull it up, just keep teasing it up until you get the right distance. And you can see you've got the right distance from the one previous. Then pull that up tight. And now that we've done that, we go, so it's gone through that loop there, we go through that loop there, the next one, to it. Hang on, let's just turn that a bit. So we've done that loop there, we go through that one there. So next thing I'm going to do, needle through, make sure it goes over the top of my cord at that point there. So we're creating the half hitch and pull it all through like so. And that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a couple more rows. It's a great one for in front of the telly. Once you get used to this one, it's so easy to do in front of the telly and it just passes the time constructively in front of the telly rather than just sat there idly watching the telly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go and 
put another couple of turns in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going round. And so I've gone through that loop there. I'm going to go through that one there, then that one, then that one. Right, so as you can see, I've done a few more rows. One, two, three rows now. And yeah, it's taken a little time. But you can see here now that a nice spiral effect is starting to appear down our piece of pipe here. And yeah, it's starting to look good. It's a great covering knot for, like I said before, a handle, hiking stick, something like that. Even if you use finer cord, like this is probably one millimeter cord, this here, this, in this particular case, I'm using it as a wrap for a container just so that I've got a needle storage as such, just a decorative looking needle storage. But if you wanted to, you could put this on the handle of a knife and follow the contours of the actual handle of your knife. But the only thing I would say is that if you have a slightly odd shaped thing that you're covering, start at the widest point and then you can work either way from the widest point. So if you if this say for example was a wide point here i would start at this point here work down and then work wait the other way just to cover an object and the other thing that you can do as well is that if you are going along and something is increasing in size at the moment here i have gone through every single loop and as something increases in size you can gradually just make the weave just that fractionally bit looser in order to compensate for the increase in size. Or if you are going down in size on something, what you can do is either pull it up tighter or you can miss out. So in other words, if I was to do my next weave now on something that's getting a little bit smaller, what I can do is I could, instead of putting a half hitch through that one there, I can just miss out one and put a half hitch in the next one. But make sure you do it all the way around so that your pattern stays the same. Just don't do one and then expect it to look good because all of a sudden it will change the pattern slightly and so that will reflect in your work as you go along. But anyway, the whole idea of today's exercise was to show you how to do the half hitching in a spiral format and like I said before, here's one I did on a handle that I'm not too happy with because if you look at it, you can see here the spiral. Because I was using different tension as I was going along, it's important. the tension is important. It's got a slight crook in it. Here, where I've tried to keep the tension the same, it's a little bit straighter. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but also the other thing is, on a flat surface, if you really look at that sort of edge there, on that edge there, it looks nice and even and very, very flat. But if I hold this one up here, let's get that background out, you can see, as I, even as I hold that up here, there's a dip in there. And you can see there's just slight dipping there as well. A little bit of a bulge there and slight dipping. And this is what you've got to be careful of. Whatever you're covering underneath has to be as good as on top. It's not as forgiving as say, for example, if I do a Turk's head around a handle um, or some, as on this end, some cox combing. It's just not as forgiving. So that's the other thing to concern yourself about with this. So anyway, that is the end of today's little lesson, which was half hitching in a spiral format. Anyway, once again, if you liked it, if you hated it, but please do leave me a comment. Let's have a chat online. And please do share this video. And I'll catch you again next time. Bye-bye.